after a very delayed and long six and a half hour drive, I think it was in total, thanks to some goats that managed to get onto the M5 and just completely brought it to a standstill for about an hour and a half, we have arrived in Devon. I know that six and a half hours to people like in the US especially isn't long, but in the UK, six and a half hours gets you almost from one side of the country to the other. We live, to those of you who aren't familiar of where we live or how, to, to describe where we live, I always think that the UK looks like it has a bum on the right hand side, so I have to do this the other way around for the camera. On the right hand side, at the bottom, there is like a, a bum. We live in the bum and we have driven all the way down to the bit that on the west side starts to stick out. Um, so we're almost, almost at Cornwall, but not quite. Um, but yeah, it was only meant to take, because we did like a, a halfway stop in Oxford last night, which is the footage that you would have just seen at a really nice pub called The Bull in Charlbury. Uh, that was like an exact halfway point. So yesterday's drive was only meant to take three hours. However, it took almost double the time due to the goat delay. Um, but we're here now and we're staying at the most incredible house I think we've ever stayed at, uh, just outside of Kingsbridge. So we're kind of like in between Kingsbridge and Salcombe. Um, and I'll show you bits and bobs of the house throughout the next few days, but we're just gonna head out for um, a little bit of a walk around Salcombe. And then we've got a dinner reservation at 4 p.m., which is quite early. <laughs> but it was the only reservation we could get at this uh, beach house that I really wanted to have dinner at, which is like outside of Salcombe. When I say beach house, it's it's more of, I would say it's more of a shack um, that's literally on the beach. Uh, but yeah, 4 p.m. was the only reservation they had. And today is the only day that's meant to be dry. So I was like, we'll just have an early dinner. This place is incredible. The trees that surround it are amazing. They're so big. And then the building just nestled amongst the trees. That side of the building, there aren't any trees, so you get a completely uninterrupted view of all of the fields. But it is quite nice to have these trees around because you kind of feel like you're nestled within something. And then there's these like slithers of the view in between the trees. So they kind of like create these natural framings. And then off, beyond the trees, it's just uninterrupted. You've got like a really nice valley here that dips down with some trees. But then beyond that, it's just straight to the horizon line. And obviously the, the building is pretty impressive. We've been walking around just trying to wrap our heads around how like the engineering of a building like this with so much glass and all of this concrete and the cantilever it's very impressive this would be such a nice place to come with a group of friends for like a birthday celebration or something especially in the summer i think this would be so nice with all of the different like outdoor spaces yeah pretty 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 impressive View. Been so lucky with the sun today, and now hopefully we'll get quite a nice sunset. It feels so nice now. The days you can feel that the days are getting longer. The clocks change in a few days, and you can really feel the difference in the light now. So nice.
gosh, the iPhone front facing camera is really, that's very weird looking light. Um, or maybe I just need to put some blusher on to sort of balance things out. Why does it look like that? That's awful, isn't it? Anyway, I had a very wholesome start to the day watching a storm in the distance gradually get closer and closer and closer, sort of worked its way round in a U-turn and then hit the house about 10 minutes ago. It didn't last very long, but it was quite intense wind and rain for about five minutes. And now it's just blue skies in almost every direction. So we're gonna make a beeline to the beach. We've found a nice little circular walk. Where's my blush gone? Um, anyway, we're going to do a little circular walk, which hopefully, hopefully will stop via a pub. Have ourselves a little beverage by the sea and then loop back round. Where has my blusher gone? Oh, maybe it's just knocking around loose in my bag. Yes, there it is. So we're going to do that and hopefully that's the last of the the bad weather. Are you all set? Oh yeah, you oh, I need to get get a move on. Dean's got his walking shoes on and everything. Definitely see the benefits of quadruple glazing when a storm does hit. Because you couldn't hear a thing. You could just feel a little bit of a vibration. But because the house is on a hill the wind really like wraps itself around the house. It's also so warm in this house. Yeah, surprisingly, like for how big this place is and how open it is, I'm quite surprised at how warm it is. Yeah, because it's all underfloor heating apart from in these an, bedrooms. Yeah, the bedrooms don't have it, but the main part of the house does. I think it, it needs it really though, doesn't it? Because there's no walls to put radiators on, so. No, that giant part of the house, which is all glass, it's currently like 22 degrees in there, <clears throat> but you can't feel the heat. It's not like having radiators pumping. No, it's just... Which bodes well for us having underfloor heating. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are planning to have underfloor heating in our kitchen and bathroom, aren't we? Yeah. Dean's parents have it, and every time we go round, especially in the winter, it does feel very nice, especially in a bathroom. Mm. Like when you get out of the shower and you just walk onto a warm floor, it does feel very nice. Yeah, it's nice and warm without it feeling like um, that sort of horrible heat you get from radiators. Where it's like really dry. Yeah, really drying heat. Yeah. This house must be extremely well insulated as well. Yeah, I'd love to know the heat loss. Yeah. It's probably not much. No. <laughs> but honestly, sometimes the things I just sit and talk about on a vlog, un like underfloor heating, heat loss in a house. Yeah, but who doesn't love talking about quadruple glazing? Some people have the fashion. <laughs> when we got here, I was glazing. like <coughs> just amazed by a drawer full of David Mellor cutlery while you were like, just staring at the quadruple glazed windows. <laughs> yeah, the whole. Oh, you can tell. <laughs> I was going to say something <laughs> You're else. You're going to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Right, Dean's just gone outside. Oh, he's just come back in doing a, a weather check. I'm putting heat tech on just to be on the safe side. Um, very, very comfortable and casual walking outfit because I'm not making the same mistake as yesterday. <laughs> um, so, hey, I have had a coat again. This is so thick and heavy. I feel like I'm overheating now, but it's just because the house is so warm. A really chunky knit from Nothing Written Totem Net scarf. My vintage Levi's and Blundstone boots. I wore these during the first half of our renovation and they're completely beaten up now. And then a beanie. Ooh. I think that's... This is such a good wind-stopping jacket as well. 
might even take a while. <laughs> we thought we were so smart. We thought we'd avoided the storm, but it's come back. Oh, it didn't the storm. <laughs> a hail storm. Oh, a hail storm. Ah! Oh, oh my god, it's massive. Well, yeah, it's pretty big. This is very nice. So we've just left the pub and uh, it's snowing and it's like fully settled. We've had to just stop the car and sit in it while we defrost it because there is actually a thick layer of snow over everything. <laughs> Happy spring! Okay, welcome to the nightmare that is the wardrobe room, aka the stock room. We are spending the bank holiday weekend giving this a major glow up because, so our house is three bedrooms. We have our bedroom and then this room, which is a mirror image of the bedroom. So two really good sized bedrooms. And then there is a very small third bedroom, which I don't even think you could get a single bed in. It's really quite tiny. Um, that room will be made bigger when we do the double height extension. So that has just been left. It's still got wallpaper hanging off the walls. There's holes in the floor. It, that's just a storage room. The door stays shut. Then this is the kind of dressing room. The plan is when that third bedroom is made bigger, that will be kind of like a sort of dressing room slash walk-in wardrobe. And then this will be a second bedroom, like more of a guest bedroom. But that's not going to be until at least... October maybe November which is still a long way away and I just cannot deal with this room being like this for much longer because I spend every other weekend reorganizing it trying to make it function better but it just doesn't it it it's such a mishmash of storage and things are all kind of here there and everywhere and it's one of those rooms where again we just shut the door and we just kind of ignore it and I want this to be a bit more of a nice kind of almost like a dressing room it's not going to be pretty but I want it to feel nicer to be in so we're going to get rid of these two huge rails and replace them with a much better storage system 
and this is going to change we're going to do more shelving here um yeah everything's just going to be all changed and hopefully we can get a mirror in here behind here is a fireplace and a cupboard that we can't get to because of this rail like it just we kind of when we moved we were just like right just get two huge rails and just dump everything on them um and that worked fine in the beginning but now it's like i want this to actually be a bit more of a functioning space where both of us can actually see things properly um this will also be a good opportunity to pack away some of the really heavy winter stuff that fingers crossed we won't need until the end of the year um so yeah it's operation stockroom transformation because it literally does feel like a stockroom <laughs> with the double height rails um yeah, I quite enjoy stuff like this, you know, when you just give yourself like two to three days to really get stuck into like properly redoing a room or like reorganising or having like a tidy up. I just, yeah, love it. So hopefully at the end of this weekend, this will actually be a space that I can kind of like come into and enjoy being in. Because um, it's all, we plastered it, it's had just like a coat of white paint, the floor's all done. So it is all like, the, the bones are there for it to be the guest bedroom as soon as that third room is made bigger um but yeah like i said it's not for a while so this has more potential this has potential to be a nicer room in this kind of like wardrobe state um but we've just not organized it very well Day two of the wardrobe room glow up as you can see significant progress has been made there's still a long way to go i think i've still got a full day dedicated to this room until it's finally like clear but look how clear this side of the room is this is the cupboard i was saying was hidden behind the rail and now i have a mirror in here which also feels like a massive step forward because it really opens up the space like this mirror has been hidden away and i love this mirror because it's so big um, and I've wanted a mirror in this room so that I can actually kind of get dressed in this room, but it's just, there's not been the space for it. So this is big, big step forward. It also hides the, um, the fireplace because the fireplace is not functioning and it's quite a mess. So I'll show you behind, you can see behind there, like it's not, it's not pretty. So that hides that. Then we have this wall on the side here that's completely clear. We could put a picture up there, maybe even have, have a chair here. There's still lots to tidy away. I need to find homes still for lots of things. I'm now about to put a rail across here and a piece of fabric to act as a curtain so that when I walk in, that is not where my eye goes directly to. Because I think as tidy as I make that, that is still always going to look like quite a busy area. So covering it up will make this whole side feel really clean and tidy. Um, and then on this side, this is the new clothing storage much much nicer than the big rails we have just ordered some more drawers because we thought we could get away with doing like the fold over with the trousers along the bottom there but they touch the floor so we're just going to do drawers all the way across um i think that is it so yeah one one more day of just finessing now and i will finally have a kind of functioning almost dressing room really it feels so much nicer in here i can like take photos in here, can film in here, can get dressed in here, can do so much more in here. <laughs> As my hair gets closer and closer to the awkward nether zone, I'm enjoying doing a front flip because it kind of gives it a bit more body. As it gets longer, it will just start to weigh itself down more and more. Um, I'm very undecided what I'm doing with it at the moment. I'm not sure whether to cut or grow. Like at this length, I really like it. But then I think ahead to summer and I'm like, oh, I would like it to be a bit longer, perhaps. Dean has decided he's growing his hair out. Um, so I feel like if I do it alongside him, we're more likely to succeed because we can kind of keep each other on the straight and narrow, um, hold each other accountable and avoid any sort of like spur of the moment haircuts. As it approaches the collarbone, that's that's the bit where I fall off and then I cut it again. Anyway, um, before I start painting this room, I am just off out to do some really boring jobs. One of them though, it's kind of fun. I'm going to 
try and find some dark brown wooden buttons for this trench because it's a very light, very, very light beige. And I think it could benefit from a darker button. I don't particularly like how much these blend in with the trench. Um, and then I'm going to attempt to DIY it. I've, I've put buttons on things before, but not the proper way. Um, and looking at this, it looks like there's some sort of like specific kind of way of doing it. So I'm going to go on YouTube and see if I can do this myself. Um, very practical outfit for the April showers, including the rubber clogs, um, which I just put on Instagram this morning and uh, my DMs have blown up. Who knew that people would love these clogs so much? Anyway, um, this is the cropped navy cos jumper that you've uh, seen before. Uniqlo t-shirt. These are the a piece apart spa pants in the washed kind of navy. Um, they're they're a great pant. They're a really really good trouser. They are they have a double pleat. They're a, they've got elasticated waist, super lightweight. Um, love them. If a piece apart plan to do them in other colours, I will have to really resist temptation. I would love like a kind of like almost like a burgundy Bordeaux colour, or maybe like a sort of mustardy green. Anyway, these are all hypothetical colours that are not out. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the clog. The clog, because uh, the weather, it's four seasons in a day at the moment. Um, and then, do you know what I'm really enjoying is kind of offsetting lighter beiges with a, with a pop. I got this Pleats Please bag from a vintage seller based in Paris uh, called Iris Archive. And I just love this pop of purple against the, um, the quite kind of murky, wishy-washy beige. Really nice. Um, so that is that. Do you know what? Can I get this over the shoulder? I was just thinking the practicality of this today actually might not be that great considering. Eh, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. But that would be a nice scenario. I think we can all agree from what this room was, just please remember what this was, it has come on leaps and bounds, virtually unrecognisable. I mean, it was, that room was chaos. The only remaining kind of like big job to do in here is to <laughs> sort out these very, very short cafe curtains. We put these in ages ago as like a temporary solution um, and they've just been there ever since. So I would really like some bamboo roller blinds here. And then I still need to just gloss this door. And then we latex the fireplace just to tidy it up. And then I'm gonna paint that schoolhouse white because we don't really know what we're gonna do with that fireplace in the long run. I think it will be, we'll, we'll buy a mantle. Like imagine the mirror's not here. There's like a bed in here. Um, that will have a mantle on and will be like a sort of focal point in the room, but we're not really sure. It won't be a functioning fireplace. Definitely not. It's all blocked up now. Um, so anyway, that's, that's ages away. That doesn't matter. Um, this hides a multitude of sins. Uh, I have kept it tidy behind there, but like I said earlier in the vlog, uh, no matter how tidy those shelves are, that will always be the first thing the eye is drawn to when it walks in. So this is so much neater. Desktop computer will go in the studio next week. And then, yeah, that, that is it. Ah, oh, it's, you have no idea how happy this makes me to have this second space to just be in, get dressed in, just enjoy. It's now 5pm and you can see the light in here is really nice. Sometimes I sit on this chair and just do a little bit of work on my laptop. Um, 
And I've also been using it to do Pilates in each evening because again, like that, that, that light, this space beforehand, I was kind of squeezing myself in here on the tiniest little slither of floor. And it was just a horrible place to kind of do Pilates in. Um, so to now have this actual space where I can actually like spread out and actually do the exercises in, uh, yeah, it's great. It's just, oh, I'm so pleased. So pleased to have this all organised, clear, sorted. Um, and then, so behind me, this is obviously the main bulk of the clothing storage. Had we have maybe just thought this uh, been a little bit more considered with this, we probably would have bought a fifth one. Still might, not sure. Moved them along a bit and had the fifth one as a singular, like a long drop so that all my dresses could have gone on there. But this rail is fine where it is. It just, I guess, would have been nice to have this wall clear and then had a chair and an ottoman because we've got the Fay Too Good, too good um, puffy chair, but it's in storage at the moment at uh, Dean's sister's house <laughs> in her garage. Uh, and it, yeah, it just would have been nice to have maybe had that here, but that might be something I think about. I'll see if this, if this annoys me, I might just order another one of these. But at the moment, it's fine. It doesn't offend me too much. So yeah, that is it. Another space that you can expect to see me vlogging from and taking Instagram pictures from. I'm just about to shoot some content in the spare room because I can do that now. I'm doing some sponsored content for a really, really, really nice brand called A Piece Apart. The pieces they've sent me are beautiful, really nice colours. This shirt is from them. Like, how nice is this colour? Um, anyway, I was just putting on some shoes ready to, to shoot the look. Um, and so I, I have these Teva Voya Infinities. I'm not going to get too close because they are so heavily worn. They're, quite, they're kind of gross. Mm -hmm. Had them for two summers. Um, they're so comfortable. I wore them for three days straight when I was in Copenhagen last summer and did like a ridiculous amount of steps in them and had no issues whatsoever. Because this bit here is really stretchy, I found them particularly good for myself because in the heat, walking a lot, feet tend to swell. Um, and this elastic is like really soft and stretchy so it doesn't cut into, well it didn't cut into my feet and then as my feet expand <laughs> the straps can expand as well, very handy. Um, but because they are so heavily worn they have got a split on them and I feel like it won't be long before they just like split in two. So I ordered another pair but I ordered them from Amazon so I've already fallen at the first hurdle ordering shoes from Amazon. Um, but they're out of stock everywhere else and I don't think they're real. It's very hard to tell because shoe, you know, brands do change their designs from time to time. But as soon as I got them out of the packet, I was like, something's not right. The shape of them looks a little bit different. There's just like details here and there that are different. And I'm like, did they change the design or are these not legit? Because I've had this before with some Havana flip flops ordered them from Amazon, they weren't real. I could tell they weren't real because I was comparing them to another, a real pair that I had and was like, these are definitely not real. Um, so yeah, questioning, questioning. Um, and it's difficult because they are so heavily worn. There's so many details on them that have started to wear away, but there are some details that just aren't quite the same as these. So I guess just a word of warning, they are a great pair of sandals. And if you're looking to buy them and have been looking on Amazon, and there's thousands and thousands of reviews, but maybe things slip through the net and people just don't notice this. But yeah, just a word of warning that I am unsure if they are the real deal. Okay, th this, this is what I want to be wearing. I am so ready for warmer weather. Like, please, the summer could not come soon enough. I think this summer might be the summer where I wear a little bit more colour. Nothing too bright, not huge amounts of colour, but, you know, like, keep within keeping of sort of, like, slightly muted colours. And these two colours together with the white shoes, tick, tick, tick. Love this. Silver earring. I'd probably add some more silver rings. I'm just shooting this outfit at the moment for the brand. Um, I'd say the colour of this shirt is pretty true. Maybe slightly less purpley than it's looking on camera, but it's it's pretty spot on. But, yeah, with the wash navy love it um it, the shirt's from a piece apart by the way as as well as the trousers i think this summer is also giving me the the summer of the the elasticated cotton poplin trouser that will be a uniform 
This has now turned into a bit of an impromptu kind of like outfits, like summer outfits segment in the vlog, which was not planned. I'm just taking some mirror selfies for a carousel for the brand, because I feel like that's just a nice way, a nice engaging way to show the outfits. Uh, and every outfit I've put on, I'm like, oh, this, this is what I want to wear. This would be a practical one for just like maybe walking around the city. And in my rather large bag, I would have a sort of cover up for when I'm in the direct sun particularly for this area. Now that I'm getting older, this is an area that I'm very protective of. Um, in my 20s, I've had one too many burns on the chest and now I'm feeling the um, the aftermath of it. Like it just changes the texture of your skin, doesn't it? And like sunspots and yeah, so I'm always very conscious of just like covering this up now. Um, so yeah, I would, if I don't know why I'm pretending like this is a scenario that's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> I've really like, romanticise this like stroll around the city in in the summer in this outfit already haven't I anyway <laughs> I would have a cover up in my bag um but both a piece apart again I I like this kind of deep you cut of the tank I'm not wearing a bra um I wouldn't I'm not sure how I would tackle the bra situation with this actually it would have to be like a a triangle bra it couldn't be anything that you know, pokes out of the vest. Anyway, and I love the colour of this skirt. How good is this colour? This kind of like washed, like ready brown, really nice. And I like this as well. These are the, the real Tebas that I know are real. <laughs> um, and then the bag is from an Australia brand called Affairs. It's made from, she makes all of the bags from dead stock fabric. And this is like a really nice boiled wool. It's just such a good crossover crossbody pretty bag that just fits a ton of stuff in it i love it right this is the last one i promise because otherwise i'm just defeating the purpose of the instagram post and i'm going to ruin the surprise um just tried the yellow just, this was a very last minute thing i was like right i'm just going to try the yellow with the blue because i had this shirt with this tank on and some cream trousers which looked nice but it was a bit like i don't know the shirt and the trousers felt like they were blending in together a little bit too much so i was like right i'll just try the blue Yes, the, I like what's going on here. I really like the buttery yellow. I've got a few things in this colour, but have felt a bit unsure how to, to style them because every time I put them on, I felt like they're not working with my hair colour or my skin tone. And I think that's because I've always paired a buttery yellow with black and black only. And that is quite a, a harsh contrast that perhaps doesn't look great on me anyway something's going on with the blue it's just creating a nice little bit of balance here with the black vest and the black shoes and I, and I really really like this a lot it's made me rethink how I can wear yellow in the summer um I mean if I wear it like this I probably would maybe add maybe add like a chain Not, maybe, nothing too statementy because with my style and the way I like things the color itself is kind of the statement so I'd probably keep the jewelry really like really simple just like a chain and maybe one ring um again just Im just imagining hypothetical situations that aren't going to happen for a very long time um and these are the la mer sandals that i got in february when i was at copenhagen um they were deeply discounted in the holly go lightly closing down sale and their current season so i was like zoom, straight away and they're pretty comfy, you know. They've got um, like a spongy insole, which I didn't realise they had. So it's it's really padded. Someone commented on the last vlog saying, is it even a Brittany vlog if you haven't seen her in a navy blue jumper? And I feel like that could not be more accurate. So here I am, closing chat in a navy blue jumper. Um, it could be a long closing chat, FYI. I have just bought a bathroom sink for a bathroom that doesn't even exist yet. <laughs> but I feel like when looking at, you know, like reclaim things and, you know, trying to source things secondhand, when the right thing presents itself to you, whether you are ready for it or not, sometimes you've just got to go for it. And that is how I felt when this sink presented itself to me. I'm going to put it here so you can see what it looks like. We didn't really have a solid plan for the interior of the bathroom. But as soon as I saw this sink, I just could envision the entire bathroom. And I was like, that is it. That is the one. 
So that's arriving next week. Have no idea where we're storing it. <laughs> um, but I just knew it was the one. And I've also ordered a desk. I need a chair though. That's just reminded me. I really need to get myself a proper office chair that actually is supportive as opposed to a chair that looks nice but is back breaking. Must remember to do that otherwise I'm going to be sat on like a dining chair behind my desk. Um, but I'm not going to show you the desk because I want that to be a surprise in the next vlog. Um, and that means that I can finally start editing back on my desktop computer which would be great because obviously editing on a bigger screen is just such a such a nicer experience and a lot smoother. Um, and getting the sync this early on has actually been great. It's been a great catalyst to start organising other things because when doing renovation or any build really, anything that involves electricity or water, those decisions actually have to be made quite early on because wires and pipes a lot of the time get hidden either underground or in walls, so like behind the plaster. Um, and you have to kind of, so you have to have that ready quite early on. And it can, like, if you don't get it right, it can then be harder, like, a bit of a headache to get it changed later on. Uh, we had an issue with our radiator in our hallway, actually. We we rushed the decision, put it in completely the wrong place and had to have it changed and have the floor all taken up. Um, so we'd really like to avoid that. So now it's really got me thinking about, like, where the kitchen sink will go. And even just things like the type of taps that you have, that can change, like, the, the way the pipes will be. So... Um, it feels like slowly but surely we will be at, at the point where like these quite exciting decisions will be made um even though at like, the moment that it's an absolute just just this awful mess out there and will be for a long time um so yes um the other thing i was going to say is i filmed this vlog entirely on my iphone the last few weeks um whilst I'm just sort of like knee deep in the vlog camera re reviews trying to figure out which camera I would like to get. I have narrowed it down to two but they are two very different cameras. <laughs> that DJI um, pocket that is tiny and has intrigued me a lot because a lot of people are raving about it and just the ease of that camera blows my mind. I'm like what? Um, it has truly been made for like traveling and, and vlogging in mind. Then the other camera is a Fuji X-S20. So that's kind of like the other end of the spectrum, both in terms of size and price. Um, but the footage that comes out of that camera is stunning. And it's kind of Fuji's foray into a vlogging type camera. But I haven't actually seen that camera in real life, so I'd quite like to see it IRL so I can see how big it is because I have to really question whether I can be a person who carries a camera like that around with me all the time or whether the DJI is actually the the more logical decision but then I see some footage from that DJI that I don't like sometimes it looks a bit flat and I don't know so that decision will be made in the next few days and the final thing that I want to say is just the the most the biggest most heartfelt thank you I can ever say uh, for the comments on the last video because when I was um, talking about the, sort of the headspace that I'd been in recently I didn't do it with any intention of kind of getting anything back I just wanted to be transparent about how I'd been feeling and some of the comments I mean most of the comments had me crying because not only were they just extremely ex supportive but just seeing other people be very open about similar headspaces and and people you know offering advice about like uh, on you know how to you know help and like how to get out of that and um I don't know it just made me feel I was like oh my oh my god we all have so like we're all so similar in this kind of like negative self-talk habit and how so many of us get in these these awful head spaces and I don't know I just seeing the amount of sharing was such an incredible testament to the community that is here and the amount of love that was was there not not f just for me but for just ev just for everyone i was like this it was really 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 nice it was just a pleasure reading through all of those um so yeah thank you and i was speaking to a couple of friends recently actually about this this headspace that i've been in and um they were like, April is is really when the year starts. 
And I was like, that is, I get that. I really get that because I feel like I'm now coming out of that really horrible place I was in. Like the weather's getting better. Um, you know, like things are going to start happening next week outside. Um, but I think giving myself the the focus of sorting this room out was really helpful as well. A bit of like spring cleaning. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. I think I'm ready for the year. Um, so that this is me coming out of my chrysalis. This is me starting 2024. Almost three years. Uh, sorry, not three years. <laughs> three months late. Anyway, um, I could go, I could go on forever about how how grateful I feel for um, for that. Um, so, but, but I'm not going to. <laughs> so until I see you again, I hope you're all doing well. I've made a note on my notes to include books in the next video because I have been reading, but I've not actually mentioned a single book yet this year. There will be the chaos of the dig out outside and I'm in Menorca for a few days at the end of next week for both work and pleasure. So those will be the bare bones of the next vlog. So until then, um, I hope you're all keeping well. And I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.